Thanks. Um, Justin, you said um, the last time we talked to you about working, you were talking about working one-on-one -on -one with, with Coach Day, maybe a little more sort of as you were waiting for the season to um, arrive or practice to start up. What specifically were some of the mechanical things uh, you guys were hoping to work on at that time? Um, really just like basic stuff, just uh, my stride and uh, getting my front hip through. So just not nothing crazy, just little little fixes here and there. Um, and, and really just kind of uh, more more working on the, the knowledge of the game and, and kind of just, just, just going through different defenses in our, in our offense because, you know, we have CJ and Jack and uh, they, they don't really know the offense as well as I do. So uh, Coach Dennis has been working with them. And then while they meet with Coach Dennis, me and Coach Day, we meet and then we kind of dive deeper in, into our playbook and, and, and talk about it more. And uh, Chris Olave was on with us earlier this week, um, sort of talking about how the, the final play of the Clemson game sat with him. I'm just wondering when, when the play like that happens, and, and Chris seems to put a lot of it on, on himself, and I'm sure you think about it as well. Like, does that help you guys form any kind of better connection? Do you try to work on timing maybe even more than, than you did last year just to, to make sure you're totally in sync and, and try to avoid stuff like that, you know, even if it's not on a stage like the Clemson game? I mean, I, I think if that play would have happened or not, we, we would have been working the same amount we have been. So, uh, you know, whether or not that would have happened, I think uh, we, we would have worked as, as hard as possible. But, of course, that definitely sits on well with, with us. So, I mean, uh, everybody knows Chris, Chris is a great receiver. He's a hard worker. He's a great leader. So, uh, we've, we've just been getting uh, better in the offseason. All right, next up we'll go with Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Austin. Justin, is there any part of you that wants to get hit before October 24th? Um, no, not really. I mean, <laughs> last year I didn't get hit before the season, so uh, I think I'll be fine. Um, I don't really plan to get hit that much, I really, you know. So uh, I hope I don't get, get hit that much that uh, first Nebraska game. But, um, yeah, so not, not really. I don't, I don't really have the urge to, to hit anyone. Really. And, and when you're in the quarterback room with these young guys, you know, CJ and Jack, we – you know, we haven't got to see them much, and they missed all of, of March and spring ball. What have you seen from those guys as they try and, you know, play a backup role behind you? Uh, I think those guys are, are really hard workers. You know, they're smart, um, and they, they really just want to get better. I, I think just from being around them, they're, they're open to, you know, me talking to them and, and Coach Dennis talking to them. So uh, if the, the biggest thing I, I see with CJ and Jack are, just their urge to get better and their urge to learn. All right, next up, we got Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch with Tony Gerdeman on deck. Bill. Hi, Justin. Uh, the last time we talked to you, it hadn't come out yet about the change in your diet. Um, could you kind of explain uh, what the diet is and, and what made you decide to go with that? Uh, yeah, it's just a basic vegan diet, really. So I don't eat uh, meat, dairy, or... Um, fish or anything like that. I, I eat fish like maybe once in a blue moon. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just that. And then my fam, my dad actually wanted to do it because he was kind of heavy. So I, I just tried it with him. And then uh, it, it kind of turned into a, a family thing. So first we started off as a 28 day challenge. Uh, it, it was really a cleanse. And then um, I, I just like how I felt after that and um, just, just kept going on from there. So I'm doing it now and I, I, I feel great. My body feels great and I, I feel faster and stronger. Um, when you first kind of proposed it, was it you or your dad uh, had to come up and were you skeptical at first? Nah, I'm, I'm pretty uh, open to new things. I'm not really, really skeptical, skeptical about uh, trying new things. So, uh, you know, when, when my dad brought it up, I think my, it was initially going to be my dad, my stepmom and my sister. And I said, you know what, I, I might as well join them and, uh, you know, get them on the little competition we had. So I uh, just joined them and no, we, we had fun with it, and I think uh, our members benefited from it. And just real quick, could you just kind of give your assessment of how the other quarterbacks are doing right now? Uh, yeah, they're doing great. Um, they're, they're both getting reps with the two, so they're uh, competing right now. But they're, they're both doing awesome. They're both uh, fast learners, and they're, they're both, uh, of course, talented. I mean, if, if they weren't talented, they wouldn't be here at, at Ohio State. So they both can sling the ball in it, and they're both very uh, athletic. So, so I think they're doing pretty good. Thanks, Justin. Yep. And next up, Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Justin, speaking of freshmen, how have you seen those four freshman receivers grow since the winter? How much 
of a contribution do you expect from them this this season? I mean, I, I think they've grown a lot. Um, not really on the physical side of the football because they they've already were there physically wise. But uh, the the biggest thing with them was kind of getting them in the playbook and kind of getting them on the same page as me. But I mean, all of our freshman receivers are great. Uh, they're they're talented. I mean, and I just can't wait for this this upcoming season. I think they're gonna be a, a big part in, in our offense and. and Definitely uh, rotate a little bit, so you guys should see him out on the field. A little bit. And then re regarding the diet, how did what did Coach Mick think? Um, I think Coach Mick was skeptical about it first, and so was our nutritionist. But I, I think uh, I proved to them that you know that I can do that and actually uh, be able to perform even better than I was before. So I think after them seeing that with their own eyes, and then they started to believe that you know maybe. This, this is working for them. So, so I think they're, they're open to it now. Thanks. Yeah. All right, next up, Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com Cleveland.com with Dan Hope on deck. Nathan. Yeah, Justin, also on the, the freshman receivers, how much more do you expect to know or learn about them once you guys get to start having full contact practices? Um, we've already been kind of having dud practices. I mean, I don't think – uh, we're going to learn that much about him, to be honest. I think I've, I've seen a lot from them already and just just what they can do out there on the field. So I don't think I have really much to learn more, more about him, to be honest with you. Hey, Coach Day said that one of the things you're doing this year is just asking more questions, asking tougher questions in, in meetings and things like that. Where did that come from? Was that something – did you feel like you learned more in the off season and and can now apply that, or is that just from a year of experience? I think it comes from a year of experience. You know, last year I was kind of new to the playbook. So, you know, Coach Day and Coach uh, Mike Yersich, they would kind of uh, give me the play and kind of uh, kind of be like, yo, like, it's either most likely going to be this guy or this guy or this guy open on a certain play. So now I can ask why we're calling a certain player or what Coach Day's goal is to, when it comes to, to calling that certain play. So I'm just kind of trying to pick Coach Day's brain and, and kind of – get the reasoning behind why he's calling a certain play at a certain time of the game. All right, next up, Dan Hope from 11 Warriors with Kyle Rowland on deck. Dan. Justin, you mentioned the nutritionists. Kevin Wilson was saying last week that, you know, they'll kind of do special meals for you because of a diet of a year on. Just kind of how, how does that work and how much does that help that, you know, you have people at Ohio State that are willing to accommodate what you're trying to do? Yeah, I mean – they do a great job. I, I really don't know if I'd be able to stick with it, you know, if I didn't have them pretty much giving me uh, food every day. But um, that they've, they've done a great job. Um, basically, I go there, I, I eat breakfast, and then um, they, they usually have a meal made for me uh, right before practice time. So I eat that before practice, and then uh, they have vegan options, you know, after practice for, for dinner for me to take home. So I really don't have to buy any food. Uh, they, they all make it for me there. What are like your favorite vegan meals? What are maybe some things that you can eat that maybe people wouldn't know that you would eat? I usually eat, um, sorry, my dog's right here, but um, I usually eat like a, a salad, like a tofu salad or like a tofu burrito or something like that. And, you know, I, I think there's a lot of options. There's way too many options to kind of narrow it down because, you know, I, I don't think I've experienced all, all the vegan options, but, you know, all the things I've tried so far are great. And, I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of other guys to, you know, maybe try it with me. I think Coach Day said he was going to try it. So, um, and I think uh, to Roger Mitchell, he, he just started it like this this week. So, um, you know, uh, just, just the more people that are trying is saying that it's it's not as bad as they thought they were, as that they thought it was. But, um, yeah, I, I, I like all, all the food that comes with it. And, of course, there's going to be, like, meals that don't taste the best, but you get the sacrifice. It tastes best for uh, performance on the field. And I know there are some NFL guys doing that, like Tom Brady and Cam Newton and such. Is seeing them do that, does that inspire this decision by you at all? Uh, no, not really, because I know uh, guys' bodies react differently to food. So I think it's kind of a, a personal thing. I'm not really basing it off of what they do or, you know, what, what they get the results off of, because I feel like everybody can't play football off of a vegan diet. So I, I think it just depends on uh, your, your body type and, and how your body reacts to it. Thanks, Justin. All righty, next up is Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade with Jared Smalley on deck. Kyle. 
Hey, Justin, more uh, food questions. Um, how, uh, like, is this something you're planning on doing, like, super long term, like, for the rest of your career? Or do you yeah, have, like, I, I feel like I'll, I'll be doing this pretty much the, the rest of my career because I feel good. And do you feel um, like, like, are you less full are you le or are you more like full and feel like you don't want to snack all the time? Like, how does it feel in like, that like sense? Um, no, not really. I'm not necessarily more or less full. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I guess I'm just normally full. I guess I don't know how to, you know, answer that question, but uh, I, I eat when I'm hungry, of course. And, um, uh, uh, of course, I try to eat more times throughout the day because some of the things that I eat may not have as much calories as, you know, meat or, or different carbs and stuff like that. So I do have to eat more often, but um, more often. stuff that I'm eating is healthier. And uh, as I get, as, as, again, I, I feel great and I, and I feel awesome from it. So. So, so you're just eating like several smaller meals throughout the day. Is that kind of how it works? So I, I'll pretty much break it down to you. So when I wake up, I usually either make avocado toast or I'll have a bagel with vegan cream cheese on it. And then I'll go and work out. And then after my workout, I'll uh, drink a plant-based protein shake and then I'll probably have some fruit. And then um, before practice, I'll eat one of the vegan meals that the Woody makes for me. And then um, uh, I, I, might, I might have a banana if that doesn't fill me up. And then after practice, I just I usually eat dinner and then um, go home, and then later that night, I'll just make up a, a, another protein shake, and that's pretty much what I do every single day. Okay, thanks. Yep. All righty, next up is Jared Smalley from WCMH with Spencer Holbrook on deck. Jared. Hi, Justin. Uh, a few minutes ago, Coach Day mentioned that uh, some of the staff members are not currently staying at home because they're doing um, – all they, they can to try to uh, limit their spread or limit their exposure to COVID-19. You all this week started your daily testing for COVID. Wanted to know a little bit about uh, how that adjustment has gone that you're doing it every single day for you and the players and also uh, the commitment to it that you and the players now have as you're closer to the season, knowing what your staff is doing, the serious nature of this whole thing. Uh, walk me through how you and your teammates are handling that. Yeah, I think uh, my teammates and I are, are handling it well. You know, Coach Day is constantly reminding us that uh, we should stay socially distant and, you know, try to stay away from as, as many people as, as possible. And he also said the other day, you know, the closer it gets to the season, the, the more risk you have. So uh, I think the team understands that. And I don't think it's uh, that big of a sacrifice to the team because I think everybody on the team is committed to playing the season and we all want to do well. So. We know in order for us to do well, we have to first take care of ourselves and, and make sure we stay cover free. So I think it's a small sacrifice for a big reward. And, you know, we just just doing our best to just stay uh, socially distanced and uh, just, just make sure we stay safe out there. And I'm sure you and your teammates have already seen games across the country that have been postponed or canceled because of it. We lost an NFL game this week because of it. Mm -hmm. So has that also been sort of that reality check of, of how serious this is? Yeah, just, just having those examples, you know, Coach Day and, and Coach Nick, they, they do it. They literally tell us every day, like, to, you know, stay safe, make sure you're making smart decisions outside of the facility. And, um, you know, just seeing that, I think it's uh, kind of a, a, it's, it's kind of a reality check for the team, you know, that it's just because you're getting tested every day doesn't mean the virus goes away. So uh, I think the team knows that we have to stay safe and make some smart decisions outside of the facility. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. All right, next up is Spencer Holbrook from Letter Monroe with Patrick Murphy on deck. Spencer. Justin, this has been a longer offseason than everybody's used to, and I'm sure you've dove into film the entire offseason. How do you make sure that you and Coach Day aren't, and Coach Dennis aren't really overthinking what you guys are doing with, at the quarterback position and uh, make sure that you're just kind of still able to go out there and play football without overthinking because you've had such a long layoff? Yeah, I think uh, I've done more of the overthinking than Coach Day, but I've I actually had to – have a private conversation with Coach Day and, you know, talk to him uh, about that subject, actually. But, you know, I think Coach Day, he's experienced enough, you know, he's been to the NFL to where he's had players maybe overthinking the past and he knows how much talent we have on this team. And uh, he his, his number one thing is just don't overthink. If, if anything, just go out there and, and play your game. So I think Coach Day does a great job of reminding me that and, and just, just, you know, just, just the number one thing is just to 
every time you go out on the field and just play your game, don't think and, and just, uh, you know, just, just, just play. Is it, and then I have to ask, is it hard to have a dog and also be a Heisman Trophy favorite? No, nah, not really. He actually keeps me uh, busy at home because, you know, I'm not really hanging out with anybody. So it's just, just me and him the, the whole time. So we're, we usually we just chill and, chill and watch, watch Netflix movies when I'm home. So it's Thanks, fine. All righty, next up is Patrick Murphy from 247 Sports with Colin Hill on deck. Patrick. Justin, last year you obviously had a, a reliable guy in KJ in the slot. We talked to Garrett the other day about his move to the slot. I'm curious how you've seen that transition go for him and, and what he provides from that position. Yeah, I mean, Garrett's a talented receiver. I mean, he might be one of the best receivers in the country, but of course he didn't really get to – play that much last year, but I think he's going to make a big uh, impact for us this year. I mean, he's, he can really do everything. He has speed, he has hands, uh, he, he can jump. I mean, he, there's really not anything he can't do. So uh, just having him in the slot, you know, uh, is, opens up our offense more because the defense, he can go in or out. You know, he's, he has more routes uh, that, that he can run. So just having him there, it's, it's going to help us a lot on offense. And uh, he's becoming a, a leader more and more every day. So I'm just, just glad he's there. And you have been to SEC atmospheres. You've obviously played in the Big Ten. This year's going to be strange with, with no fans in the stands. I know you guys practiced at Ohio Stadium last week and are going to do so again. As a quarterback, how is that going to change stuff for you? How weird do you think that's going to be? I'm just curious from, from your perspective what you make of no fans in the stands. Yeah, me, I, last year uh, during the game, or before the game, per se, uh, I really wouldn't get hyped. You know, I, I'm a, more of an even field guy, so before games I would listen to, um, you know, more more slower music and stuff like that uh, rather than pump up music just, just to keep my mind calm and to, to be able to think because I think quarterback's more of a mind game and, and, and knowing what to do more than, you know, just, just going out there and, and hit somebody like a defensive player. So, so I think – uh, it's, it's not going to change that much for me, but I think it, it is going to have an effect on other people. But it's our job to make sure we create energy throughout the team and, uh, you, you know, just, just have energy when we play. Thanks, man. Yep. All right, next up, Colin has Hill from 11 Warriors with Doug Lamarice on deck. Colin. Hey, Justin, when you look at what this offensive line is, how does it compare in your mind to what you guys had last year? Um, I think, you know, our, our O-line this year is, of course, more experienced. I think Josh White and Thayer, they're more comfortable in a leadership role. Um, and, and I think with Harry, of course, he's a, he's a new starter this year. I think he's, he's learning from those guys. And, of course, from that last video, Ohio State Post, that I think earlier this week, you guys see Harry's a, a, a very smart guy. So just having uh, Harry there and then whoever's going to start at right tackle, um, I think those guys are just, just open to learn. And, you know, the, the leaders they have on the O-line, uh, I mean, they, they probably have some of the best leaders in the country. So just, just having the leadership we have on the O-line and just the, the coaching, I mean, I, I don't think it gets, gets any better than that. Did you, did you try to have any influence on, on keeping Wyatt around this season? Of, of course. I mean, I was calling Wyatt. I, I think I, I was kind of a, annoying him a little bit. But, you know, that, that just what, what comes with it because – I think a quarterback is, is, is only as good as his old line. So I'm, I'm trying to have the best line in the country because I know that's only going to make my job easier. Thanks, Justin. Yep. All right, next up, Doug Lamarice from Cleveland.com with Tim May on deck. Doug. Justin, we know injuries are part of the game, but as you look back now, um, after you, you hurt yourself late last year, how much in the end do you think that affected you? And, and what does it do for an athlete? Are you even more excited to get back on the field feeling completely healthy to maybe see, you know, what you can do this year if you're not dealing with something like that? Yeah, uh, later in the season last year, it, it, it had a big effect on me. I mean, um, there, were, there were times where off of the football field where it, it would hurt to walk. So, you know, just, just being fully healthy now. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do this year because I haven't ever prepared. Like, I prepared for a season like I have this past off season. So, I'm, I'm just excited to be able to get, that, get out there on the field and, just, just show uh, the, the world what I can do, what uh, my teammates can do, and, and just, just show how hard we've, we've been working. And Justin, I know obviously your, goal are, your goals are team goals and winning a championship and that kind of thing. But every great athlete also has individual goals. Even whether, whether it's about a Heisman conversation or awards or stats or anything like that, 
just where are you in wanting to show people how good you are or maybe trying to show you're as good or better than any player in college football? It, wh how would you describe your personal motivation for this season? Um, to be honest, my personal motivation is just to win games because I know if we win games and I do my job and we all do our jobs, I think everything will, will take care of itself. So I think our main focus is to just win our, win our first game and, and beat Nebraska and we prepare like that every week. Like that's that's what we did last year. So if we prepare like that every week, I feel like everything uh, will, will take care of itself. Because but going into last year, I, I had no idea that I was going to be a Heisman finalist. So I mean, you know, just just having all that, uh, I, I think going into this season, I should keep the same mindset and just just focus on winning, winning each and every game. Do you think you have the potential to be the best player in college football? Most most definitely, I feel like. Um, you know, I, I was gifted by God, and he's, he's given me a, a lot of talent. But um, it's, it's just up to me to, you know, just just use use that skill and just get more and more skill and, and, and really just work on my craft each and every day to get better. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. All righty. Next up, Tim May from Letterman Row with Clay Hall on deck. Tim. Thank you very much. Uh, Justin, when you smell steak cooking now, what's your response? I don't. I don't really have cravings on uh, steak, steak or chicken or anything like that. You know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of past that, especially after watching some uh, movies on 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 that stuff. So I, I really don't crave <laughs> crave anything like that. But uh, some some guys on the team always mess with me, like uh, how, how do you not eat steak or something like that? But I, I don't really crave steak or anything like that because I just I, just, I feel good with with what I'm eating. So I think you know just. The diet I'm on right now, as as, as long as it's helping me out, I, I don't mind, you know, skipping a steak every now and then. Yeah. Hey, real quick before I ask you about the offense, uh, what was the meal that you really enjoyed before you became a vegan? Um, I feel like there's too many to name, but uh, I feel like the, the mac and cheese, of course, something like that, Ch chicken tenders. Um, really, really just kids' meals, to be honest. I mean, I feel like yeah. I wasn't a, a fancy guy, you know, just, just basic chicken centers, macaroni and cheese, and just, 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 just regular foods like that. I got you. Last, last thing for me, uh, if there's a sense that this offense could be as prolific an offense as Ohio State has ever seen, which is going back a long way, as you well know. What is your sense as you sit here today uh, about that, about what you've got around you, about the offensive line you've got in front of you, and then also temper that with the idea, you know, I know you've watched games over the last couple of weeks. Some teams have had kind of slow or sloppy starts. How are, are y'all going to attack that aspect of it? But first, ask that, answer that first question. Do you have a sense this could be a ridiculously prolific offense? Yeah, I think we definitely have uh, one of the most talented offenses in the country, but uh, talent only gets you so far. So if, if we are, are able to execute, are able to stay disciplined, none of that talent will, will matter. So what we're focused on right now is just to, you know, make sure we're, we're doing everything right, everything the right way, everything uh, the coach are telling us to do. And as long as we stay disciplined and as long as we do our job the correct way, I think, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit for this offense. Name one player who's jumped out at you in just workouts on the offense that nobody knows about. Nobody knows about our offense. Um, I would say Jameson Williams has been doing doing a, a, a pretty good job at receiver lately, and uh, also Trey Sermon. He he's he's really picked up the offense quickly, and uh, I think he's 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 determined. He's he's a hard worker. He's a smart smart learner. He's he's just just everything you would want in a player. So I think uh, both of those guys are are going to have great years this year. Thanks, man. Yep. All right, we got time for just a couple more uh, questions. Uh, we'll go with Clay Hall from WSYX. Clay. Yeah, Justin, since you're co-starring with your, your buddy there, uh, what's his name, his breed? How long have you guys been together? And maybe you give us a little better shot of uh, the big fella, your dolphin. Yeah, my, my, my boy's name is uh, Uno. You know, uh, I really didn't know what to name him when I got him last year. So I, I asked around for suggestions. And uh, the, the best one I got was Uno, of course, because I'm I'm number one, but he's a he's a fresh bulldog. I've had him over uh, a year now, I think. So so I think I got him like right before last season. But um, yeah, here he is, right here. Yeah, he's, well, he's, he's a, a little bit over one now. So uh, and and one more thing. Right uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so he's your bud. Uh, I heard you say plant-based shake. Mm -hmm. I can't. That just that's a tough sell, brother. I mean, is that like yeah. broccoli or kale? You know, not, not, not broccoli. That? I'm I'm more of a chocolate guy, so I usually put um, chocolate almond milk in it, and then uh, a plant-based protein powder, chocolate uh, in that, and then I also sometimes put a banana in there, and but but other than that, I just use that. So okay. I mean, you know, if you ever want to try one, just just come <laughs> to Woody, and I'll uh, cook one up for you. So chocolate is legal. Chocolate is legal if it's plant based. Yeah, chocolate is legal. Thank you not, for the. Not answer. all chocolate though. Not all chocolate. <laughs> not like candy bars or anything like that. But the the, the chocolate I eat. Is. So you don't put a Nestle Crunch in there. Nah, no, nah, I can't do that. Can't do that. Thank you, sir. Sir. All right. Last set of questions for Justin will come from Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Justin. Uh, how, how how do you think it's maybe benefited you guys from from getting more practices in at the the horseshoe this preseason? Um, I think it's benefited us a lot. You know, just just what Coach Day said. I, I was I was on the back end of his meeting. Uh, I think that's pretty much what the game's going to be like. So just being able to practice in there and, and kind of get a feeling of what the game is going to be like. I feel like it's going to make us more comfortable when it actually comes up in in three weeks. So I feel like. You know the, the benefit of having the stadium there and, and having you know uh, just just that that game like sense feeling. I, I feel like it's it's just going to be like a another practice. In, in pretty much what Coach Day said. You said you listen to calm music before the game, typically to calm yourself. What kind of music do you listen to? It's calm music. Yeah, um, I, I really listen to calm music more than I do hip hop music, to be honest with you. But I listen to like R and B music. I listen to uh, Summer Walker, Bryce Tiller, Drake, uh, pretty pretty much all of that. So. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a, a, a different in, my, in the, the music category. You know, most guys on the team, they listen to, you know, upbeat hip hop music, but, but I'm more of a chilling, uh, laid back guy in, in terms of what I listen to. All right, Justin and Uno, thank you uh, very much for, for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and um, have, a, have a great day today. Thanks, y'all have a great day, appreciate it.